Marin, you were conducting the opening concert of the 2020 World Economic Forum celebrating 50 years. How special was that for you? Oh, so special. I think, um, you know, the fact that this has been going on for 50 years and it has transformed so much of the way we think about society and interacting and networking. And of course, it's changed dramatically even in the few years I've been coming. So. It, it's extremely prestigious to be a part of this opening event with so many, um, so many world leaders in attendance. And of course, the theme was a call for unity and joy. How important is that at this time, Marin? I really think, in in some ways, it's the most important thought that and and intention that we can have to figure out ways that we can unite and use positivity and. To, to motivate us to work on the planet, to work together to solve uh, issues of peace and conflict. And so to me, it, it's almost, it should be the leading marquee goal for us, all of us in the 21st century. Of course, you conducted the European Union Youth Orchestra along with the San Paolo Symphony Orchestra Choir and soloists from around the world for Beethoven's Ode to Joy. What was that like? Well, um, I should say, first of all, you know, it's because of your mother, Joy Breyer, that the European Union Youth Orchestra exists. She was the founder. That's an incredible coincidence. Um, they are so marvelous and so committed and devoted, and they represent the future these young people with energy and the choir from Sao Paulo, they really represent, I think, this international diversity that we're looking for. And the four solos were incredible, hailing from all around the globe. The idea really was to motivate and inspire all, all in attendance to think about joy, think about it as a unifying force. And how can we move into this next decade in a more positive way as, as humankind, not just as individual you know, nationalistic countries, but how can we come together? That's what Davos is all about. <laughs> What do you think of some of the conversations that are happening at this Davos and what do you want people to take away from it? I've heard conversations, uh, incredible conversations about the environment and about the planet. That seems to be front and center. First time it's been so prominent. That gives me courage. The young people speaking here really gives me hope for the future. And I think the, the commitment from the business leaders to invest in these issues and to support people everywhere to, to become the best they can possibly be and preserve our planet for future generations. You know, one expects to come away with a, a bit of a, you know, jaded um, attitude, but I find it incredibly inspiring to be here. Of course, President Trump addressed the forum as well. What's your message to him? What would you like to see him do? I would hope that he could also embrace the call to look at the issues that are facing our planet and our environment. How, how, can we, how can we as a leader in the world step away from the table? That I simply do not understand. So I would encourage him, I, I hope he and Greta had a moment together to talk because she's here of course. And, and instead, of, instead of trying to put her down, really try to listen. Uh, to me, that, that would be my request. Of course, you're taking this project around the world this year. Tell me about it. Well, this is the 250th anniversary of Beethoven's birth, 2020. And how has this composer endured and remained so, so much of an icon for us? I thought, what better way than not just to take his music, but his message of unity, humankind, joy, tolerance, peace, especially conveyed in his Ninth Symphony. Take this around the world. So we have nine new texts that are being written on these themes. And um, we're, I'm partnering with Carnegie Hall, and we're taking the project 
to 11 different orchestras. We began in Sao Paulo last month here in Davos. Next in London, we go to Baltimore, we go to Sydney, we go to New Zealand, we go to Beijing, we go to, wait, I'm almost done, uh, Vienna, and we'll, we'll, oh, South Africa, and then we finish at Carnegie Hall. So wherever you are, you can come and experience the Ode to Joy. You're one of only few female conductors. Why do you think that is, and what more needs to be done within your industry to have more gender parity? You know, I think that uh, the classical music industry is really a, a microcosm of, of our broader society, and um, we still we still don't see enough women in leadership roles throughout the world, throughout corporations worldwide, and I think that's also reflected on the podiums of the world. Although I have to say, doors seem to be opening up now that were firmly closed before. So I'm thrilled, absolutely thrilled about that. Um, I started a fellowship for women conductors in 2002 called Taki Concordia and 23 women of them, 16 are now music directors. They're working all around the world. So I think you'll see this change. I, I really feel, I feel the motion forward. Marianne also thank you so much for talking to me today. Oh, my pleasure. And thanks to you and thanks to your mom.